Hey, I'm Traveling John, and I'm going to travel and sketch. Join me on the adventure. Today we're going to be traveling from Auburn, California, down to Coloma. It's about a half an hour south. Well, on this uh, beautiful fall day, I am uh, at a very famous California monument. It may not look like a famous California monument. It's an unfinished building. In fact, it's an unfinished sawmill here in the foothills of California. I'm not far from the American River, and at one point the American River, at least a portion of it, was rerouted through this to run the sawmill. This was built a long time ago, in 1848, by James Marshall. James Marshall worked for a man named Sutter, who owned Sutter's Fort down in Sacramento, which, if you were to drive, is about an hour from now, from here. And uh, Sutter owned a great deal of land, because at the time, this was not a part of the United States. It was Mexico. And Sutter had a land grant from the Mexican government that included Sacramento and a great deal of area and he was anxious to do a lot of building so he needed a sawmill. James Marshall was a very good carpenter and builder so he came up here where there was a lot of wood, a lot of pine trees that could be used to build down in the Sacramento area and he started building a sawmill. Well, he was about this far in the sawmill when one day he started to look down in the area where the water wasn't coming through yet, it was still dry. And in that area, he saw something very shiny. And he picked it up, it was a rock, and it seemed very pliable. And it ended up being gold. He got it uh, confirmed even by Sutter down in Sacramento. Well, that was exciting. That's the first time gold was ever discovered in California. But Marshall was gonna continue to build a sawmill, at least at that time. And he talked to his other workers. Of course, they found out about the gold. And they wanted to look for gold too. Well, James Marshall allowed them to look around for gold in, during their break time. And uh, well, the word got out. And 1849 became the big rush for gold because it was throughout the world they found out that gold was discovered in California. So pretty soon this place was packed with people. And pretty soon the state of California grew by leaps and bounds because everybody wanted to become rich. So this was the beginning of it all. James Marshall was the one that started it by finding the gold. And this is where it all happened, back in 1848. I'm taking a photo reference of this sawmill because it's so complicated and using it on this illustration. I'm gonna be using a canvas, my painter's canvas, has a nice texture to it, which will work out really well with an ink line sketch. I've used a photograph to do an ink line drawing on paper. Now I'm going to transfer it to the canvas and I'm trying to figure out exactly where it's going to look best according to the composition I have in my mind. Right about there should work. Now I have to transfer it. So I'm going to use some carbon paper I bought at an art store. I'm going to place it carbon size down. And then I'm going to have to tape it to the canvas. Now I found, I tried using paper, uh, painter's tape, which is not very sticky, to place the drawing with the carbon tape, and it didn't work very well. So I ended up using a stronger adhesive tape. This one I use is called Gator Tape. I bought it at a hardware store. It's very tacky, and it will keep everything in place until I'm done transferring. I'm using a straight edge and a red ballpoint pen to transfer the drawing. Well, I'm going through this quickly. I just want to uh, read a little bit something about Marshall I thought was really interesting. 
Marshall's uh, sawmill failed when all the able-bodied men in the area abandoned everything in search for gold. Before long, arriving hordes of prospectors forced him off his land. Marshall soon left the area. Well, Marshall returned to Coloma in 1857 and found some success in the 1860s with the vineyard he started. That venture, venture ended in failure towards the end of the decade due mostly to higher taxes and increased competition. He returned to prospecting in hopes of finding success. Well, he became a partner in a gold mine near Kelsey, California, but the mine yielded nothing and left Marshall practically bankrupt. The California State Legislature awarded him a two-year pension in 1875 in recognition of his role in an important era in California history. It was renewed in 1874 and 1876, but lapsed, lapsed in 1878. Marshall Penniless eventually ended up in a small cabin. So now as I transfer, or as I take off this paper and carbon, you can see the very light pencil sketch of the sawmill. It's very hard to see, but it's good enough to use with ink. Uh, and once I have the ink on that, you'll never notice the pencil. So again, I'm using a straight edge, and you can see I'm using a little rough line there to indicate the edge of the roof where all the planks of wood come down. Then I have to be very careful in my line work that I don't overlap in the wrong area a line that would cross another post. And of course I'm going through this video quickly so I don't bore you too much. Yeah, these real heavy timbers were part of the uh, forest in the surrounding area. When I say surrounding area, it was probably probably a half an hour away by horse and uh, wagon. But it was close enough so that they could make a good sawmill right here by the Sacramento River. And it was a flat enough area that they could build other buildings for both housing and also um, they of course had a great place to put the mill and get the water going in to spin the uh, water wheel and turn the uh, blades for the sawmill. Well, finish that part of the sketch of the mill and uh, that's going to be a good guide for me as I go along. This is an old sketch done about eight or seven years, seven or eight years after and you see the two pine trees. I love those pine trees. I want to include those in the sketch. I, ever since I was a kid in California history, I always remember those pine trees being a part of Sutter's Mill or the mill that Marshall built. Now I'm going to start putting in some of the background. I just line to start with somewhere where I want the trees. I'm going to sketch in a real rough tree there and there so I have it for a guide. This tree I'm putting in here, I I really don't like this pine tree, but it's a native California pine tree. It's called the Digger Pine. At least that's the slang name for it. Uh, John Muir, the famous naturalist, didn't like it very much either because it didn't give very much shade. The Indians loved it because the pine needles were very long and thin and they made great baskets. So anyway, you can see I'm putting the background in really dark to help the sawmill to pop out. And now with the ink line, I'm putting in some of the trees in the background. I use the very edge of the marker to give it a little bit more texture and not a heavy, heavy, strong line. Of course, when I want it to be really dark, I, I push down hard. So here you can see my really getting into that pine tree, giving it both texture. Now as I go off to the edge of the canvas, 
I like things to sort of lighten up and sort of fade off because I always want the center of interest, the dark and lights to be towards the middle. It doesn't have to be exactly the middle, but in this case, it's gonna be off to this left a little bit. Now I'm going back in, getting more darkness behind the uh, sawmill. You know, I, there's not any particular place that I, I figure out exactly where I want to go on this sketch. I just I just go according to what I enjoy and what I, I want to achieve. I'm getting a, a regular little like young oak in there now. Because this area is both oak trees, lots of oak trees, and pine. It's just just at the tree line where you have we start getting the uh, higher Sierra pine trees. So that's the back portion of the mill, I'm trying to show it's uh, cut into the ground so the water can flow towards the wheel. Get a little detail on the wheel that turns there in the mill, the base. This is about what the mill was like when uh, Marshall discovered gold. Uh, the last picture I showed you earlier, that was a picture of the mill, uh, as I probably told you a little bit later on in years. So they, they had that a little bit more construction, but um, never finished, never finished. And again, this is a uh, not the original mill. This is just, uh, what the state of California has put up to represent what it used to look like. But without the gold rush, oh my goodness, California, that was their big start for population. That's what brought so many people to California. And of course, with agriculture and everything else, people discovered a different kinds of gold. I was a little bit uh, frustrated with these trees. They didn't come out quite the way I was hoping to, but now I'm working on the uh, background for the other side. There's, there's hills on both sides coming down to the American River. And this is a southern fork of the American River. There's actually three forks. There's a southern, the middle, and the northern fork. And uh, Auburn, my hometown, is sort of, it's extremely close to where the northern fork and the, and the central fork meet. Uh, southern fork is closer, of course, it goes right by Coloma. They all meet and go down to Cal uh, Sacramento. Now I'm working to get some of the rock in there. And actually I sort of wish I had waited on this a little bit until I had put the, uh, the wood framing for the um, water that comes off of the mill. I wish I had put that in there first, but I got so excited about doing the rock. See, now I'm beginning to put the uh, wood framing in that holds the wall to keep the rock from falling into the, uh, where the water comes out from the mill. So, darn, I blew that one. I'll have to make up for it later on down the road, or down the waterway. Now I'm putting the rock in to where the water is supposed to come down. And again, this is where Marshall discovered the gold in that area. And now, in order to show that edge of the wood, I have to darken it in more than I sort of was intending to. 
but that's okay. It makes it stand out more. Sometimes uh, mistakes help. So here now I'm working on the rock on the other side of the hill or the um, area that was dug out. Because this is a replica, it's not connected of, to the uh, American River. It's just there for the purposes of remembering and uh, what was the very beginning of a big era. Now, the other thing that's interesting is um, after Marshall brought that gold down to Sutter to confirm that it was gold, it was only a few days later that uh, California officially became a uh, state. I finished doing the sketch of Sutter's Mill. I really enjoy doing ink line sketches, but I also really enjoy color. And I would like to incorporate color with this illustration, but I don't want to do it directly on this finished ink line sketch. It's a finished piece of artwork and it has merits on its own as an ink line sketch. So what I have done is I've scanned this sketch, I brought it into my computer, and it's digitized as just black and white at its original size. But then I reduced it down and I put it on a piece of acetate so I could use it as a guide when I do the color. So here's the black and white acetate print. And of course, it's hard to see without a piece of paper in front of it. So I've done this so I can place it behind the watercolor paper and thereby, after I put it on a light table and the light's passing through it, I can see the ink line sketch and I can put the color on the watercolor paper exactly where I want it. And then when I'm all done doing the color and happy with that, then I'm going to take that color version without any ink and line sketch on it, and I'm going to scan it, bring that back into the computer, and I'm actually going to enlarge the color and place it with the black and white illustration so you can see what that looks like. So now what I've done is I've put, I'm putting the acetate uh, ink line drawing on the watercolor paper, I'm reversing it, of course, and applying it to the back of the watercolor paper. I'm going to use some tape to put it in position so it doesn't slip away. I like to use a inexpensive painter's tape. There's not a lot of adhesive on it, so it won't ruin the watercolor paper. I'm on the light table now, and because the light is so strong all around the watercolor paper, I'm going to put some black paper around the work so it doesn't bother my eyes. So you can see I prepared the black paper. I'm now got the got the light table on, and I'm going to mount the illustration in the right placement. Okay, here we go. And I'm not going to be using watercolor paint, but I'm going to be using watercolor pencils. And I'm roughing the color in where I want it to go. The reason I don't use direct watercolor on this illustration is I don't want the paper curling all over the place on me with the extra moisture. Uh, I want to be able to see the inkline sketch and I want to be able to put the color on it where I'm hoping to have it without 
losing the image in the background. I'm trying to portray a nice warm morning sky. That's why I got the yellow in there. And of course I'm going to put some brown in on the um, actual mill itself. A little brown in the background. Gonna use a little, I'm gonna call it auburn red. That's why a lot of red soil up in this, in the foothills of the Sierras. It um, stains our clothes rather well. As you can see, I'm sort of roughing this in. Now I'm going to get some water in there to make it more of a watercolor effect. You can see what's going on there. I want it to be very loose and flowing. Makes it more fun, spontaneous, not too rigid. I've already got the ink line sketch rather rigid in some ways. This just makes it a little bit more fun and relaxing. And there we go. So I finished the watercolor wash that I'm going to be putting over the ink line sketch. And this is what it looks like on the paper. And you may not be extremely impressed, and, but I wanted the watercolor wash to be very spontaneous and fluid. And I think this is going to work quite well to back up the ink line sketch. I didn't want it to be too rigid because then it would look like I was just trying to fill certain areas. I wanted it just to be really loose and fluid. And that's what this is. And you may get a little bit better idea when I place the ink line acetate over the watercolor. That gives you a little bit of an idea what the finished piece is going to be looking like. So my next step is to take the watercolor wash, to enlarge it, and place it in Photoshop over the ink line sketch. And then I'm going to be working on it some more uh, in Photoshop. Some of you may not understand Photoshop, but don't worry about that at this point. Just enjoy the process as I go through it on the computer. So this is the computer screen showing the ink line sketch. Then I apply the layer with the color wash that I did. And if you see a big circle to the right, I selected the mountains in the background and I'm just making them a little darker. Now what I've done is I've selected the roof of the mill and I'm actually lightening that up. Now the brush tool is darkening or giving a little bit of green tint to the trees on the right. And I'm going to just a little darkening of that fir tree. I'm going to swing over to the left on the oaks, give them a little dark green forest green color. Now I'm lightening up the tint a little bit so that that fir tree on the far right is just a little green, not a lot. So I've finished doing the trees. Now I'm going to erase that watercolor line to the right or brush stroke. I just didn't like it going too high over the rocks on the right of the spillway. Okay, now what I've done is I selected the timbers that are in the spillway area and I'm lightening those up so they stand out a little bit. Just the timbers, not the rocks. 
now I'm darkening or giving a little bit more color to the rocks on either side of the spillway. So tint more color. I'm darkening up uh, the timbers that are leaning up against the right hand side of the mill, the shaded area. Now if you look at the uh, left hand side of the mill, or left side of the mill, I'm lightening up those timbers. Uh, the sun hit them pretty strong early in the morning, and I like the way they stood out. So I'm lightening those up. You can see the uh, tool, the brush tool going back and forth, lightening those timbers up, the lean up that actually hold the the uh, mill in a solid way. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go along the rocks that are either side of the spillway and I'm just going to highlight them a little bit so they stand out. Give it a little bit more three-dimensional character instead of just a solid wash going over them. Worked on some on the left and now I'm going to the right of the spillway, lighting up, giving little highlights to the rocks here and there. I finished the color version of Sutter's Mill on the computer. I'd like to show it to you. I did change a few things on it and enhanced the work a little bit. And so this is the final piece as it's printed out uh, with an extra two inch white border going all the way around it, suitable for framing. And I also uh, finished, of course, a black and white sketch without any color in it with another two inch border going around it. If you would like to invest in this artwork, you can go to etsy.com and look up my store, which is called Travel and Sketch, and you can purchase them there. I only did a limited uh, amount of printing there, so you uh, keep that in mind. And also, uh, you can buy the original black and white ink line sketch on canvas. So you can do any one of the three of those if you would like. Also, I'd like you to know I have a website called travelandsketch.com and that you're invited to to learn more about me. So thanks so much for coming along on my first vlog. I hope to do more and my objective is to do, oh, say one uh, or two every month. Uh, one to be uploaded at the beginning of the month and one to be uploaded in the middle of the month. So Take care, and again, thanks for joining me.